değişik. Alright, 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 welcome to Unfuck Nation, I am your host, Gary John Bishop, and this week I've got a dynamite show for you, um, this is something that's been on my mind for quite a while now, and again, you know, a lot of this stuff just kind of coincides with emails I get, questions I get asked by people in my life, um, or, you know, uh, you guys have been really using the uh, 646-450-3203 number, 646 646- Four five zero three two zero three. I've been getting texts from people, and sometimes I'll leave my voicemail, obviously. And, and but I hear a really common theme uh, in people's lives. People say they've lost a spark. People feel as if they're just existing. They're just getting along, and they're just kind of floating through life. And they might be in this kind of space, and might have been in this space for five years, ten years, fifteen years. Plus, okay? Now, why is that though? Why do we get to these places in life where we feel as if we're just repeating the same stuff? Well, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that, right? But but I want to obviously open your eyes up to it because I feel as if that's the big thing for us as human beings. It's, and you know, people will talk about the triumph over this and a victory over that and, you know, transforming this element of their life. Everything begins in awareness, Everything begins in a growing awareness. Now, I had a conversation with somebody actually just last night about the subject of awareness. And as I heard them talk, what I heard them talk about was knowledge. Okay, knowledge does not equal awareness. You would think it fucking would, right? You would think the more you would know, the more aware you would be. It's not quite that simple because knowledge must be investigated from the perspective of the individual. So I'll say that again. Knowledge must be inspected and inquired into, uncovered, played with from the perspective of the individual who's collecting the knowledge, right? You guys have heard me say this many times um, about my books. My books are not about the fucking stuff I've written in them. It's not. That's just knowledge. It's nothing. It'll do nothing to your fucking life. Um, The value in everything that I've written is the thinking that you do when acquiring the knowledge. So from your particular perspective, are you thinking about how it applies to your life and following it down the chain and the impact that it's having on you and the impact that it might have on other people and, you know, like how you've got yourself to where you've gotten yourself. And again, like how's that played out for you and how's it going to keep playing out for you? That kind of thinking is what uncovers new perspectives a raised awareness, and as you're raising awareness, you're literally giving yourself choice in the matter of your own life. You're giving yourself choice. So whatever I'm going to say on this show, it's going to make a difference or not, depending on the degree to which you are going to actually do the thinking for yourself as I'm speaking. You might pause You might ponder something. You might allow something to kind of soak in. You might investigate it and see all the ways in which it implicates you in this part of your life or that part of your life and so on and so forth. So you got to really do the thinking. So in our lives, if you think, you know, I'll I'll kind of retread some stuff that I've talked about in the past. Okay, I've talked about it in various books. Um, It's it's definitely in Stop Doing That Shit. Definitely in Grow Up. But... You know, the first 20 years of your existence are where you formulate sense of the world that you were born into. So the first 20 years of your existence are where you formulate some sense of the world that you were born into, your role, the role of other people, what you're actually going to be up against in this world. And again, where are you getting that information? You're picking it up yourself. No one's feeding it to you. And you're literally interacting with the world, seeing certain things happen, interpreting those events for yourself 
and then living with your interpretation like those were the events. Okay, so then you go through your life looking out for what you interpreted in the first 20 years. I'll say that again. You go through the rest of your life looking out for echoes and familiar sounds and, and, and sights and experiences of your childhood as some kind of guide rail for you in life. So you're on the lookout for certain kinds of people, people you should avoid or be drawn to, certain situations that you should avoid or be drawn to, right? So the first 20 years is really just making sense of it, right? But also in that first 20 years of your life, you are defining the game you're going to play. So not only how you're going to play it, you're defining the game you're going to play, right? So, um, and, and we talked on last week's show about games as a created phenomenon, that is creating the games you're in. But if you think of like, you know, if you think of your struggles, in life and the particular areas of life where you feel as if you've struggled, that was the game you set up for yourself. So if it's love, if that's been your struggle, your body, if that's been your struggle, your, your financial situation, if that's been your struggle, if it's been some sort of recognition or admiration, that's been your struggle to be recognized, to be admired by others, to be acknowledged by others as someone worthy, right? And I'm saying the word worthy, I just want you to get that captures a lot, right? This is actually a good example of the sort of stuff that I'm pointing to a little earlier there. When I say worthy, you got to really think like, okay, where am I up to being recognized as being someone who contributes something or someone who has value or someone that should be acknowledged and admired? Because, by the way, that particular little nugget <clears throat> is buried deep within all of us, right? That kind of need that desire to be admired, right? And I know some of you, again, some of you might say, well, I don't give a shit what other people think. Yeah, that's what you want to be admired for. <laughs> we should always laugh at that because it's so fucking true. Anyway, <clears throat> so... So in your life, that first 20 years of setting up the game, the next 20 years after that are about playing the game, winning at the game, and justifying the game. So winning the game, playing it, and justifying it. So <clears throat> if your game has been to find true love, the actual real game is to prove that it doesn't exist. And at that game, you'll see if you look in your life, oh, shit, yeah, I keep finding evidence for that it actually doesn't exist. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is if ever you have come across it, you'll ignore it, undermine it, kill it off, diminish it, diminish the person who's presenting it, whatever, you'll kill it off, right? And it's the same with every area of your life that I've just talked about. It's the same process. So the first 20 years of your life is about determining who you are and the game you're going to play in your life. The next 20 years is about playing that game and doing that for fucking 20 years. And then you get to your late 30s, 40s, sometimes a little bit later, and you realize the game was bullshit and you don't know who you are. So you realize the game was bullshit and you don't know who you are because who you now are is who you decided you'd need to be in that first 20 years of life. Now, I'm going to make a distinction here. This is one of these moments where you need to really kind of lock in. In the first 20 years of life, you decided who you'd need to be. So in the first 20 years of your life, you decided, you decided who you'd now need to be. So there's a you deciding who you'll now need to be to win at this game in the next 20 years of your life, although to you it just seems like, no, no, I'll need to be this way to make it in this life. 
So you you decided on your own personality, your own persona, your own characteristics. You adopted them as your own. And then you get stuck with them. And then they start fucking with your life and you don't know where you're at. So there you are just doing the same fucking shit, trying to solve the new problems as the same you that you decided you'd have to be in the first 20 years of your life. You, had, you decided you'd have to be independent. You decided you'd have to be competitive. You decided you'd have to be analytical. You decided you'd have to be hardworking. You decided you'd have to be kind. Now, if you take any one of those, right, <clears throat> and you really focus on one of them, you'll see like, oh, shit, like that's a massive part of my life, right? Some people sometimes look at themselves and they see themselves like maybe on occasion being kind or maybe on occasion being analytical or being on, a, on occasion being hardworking or competitive, whatever those things are. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm all of that. And I say, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> no, you're not. There's ways of being that you are. And there's not a lot of them, somewhere between three and five. And that's the limit, right? That's the fucking limit. You rely on those ways of being, those fundamental ways of being and acting to get you where you're going in this life. Those fundamental ways of being, that's who you decided you'd need to be. Somewhere back there in that first 20 years, like I talk about this and grow up, I really get into this. Life comes at you like a fucking wave. And when that wave hits, life changes. And when it changes, you decide who you'll now need to be. Life comes at you like a wave in the first 20 years, right? At various points in those first 20 years. It has an impact of you when it, at you when it comes at you like that, right? It impacts you. It changes how you see life itself. And in that change, whatever that thing was that happened, you decided who you'd now need to be. So again, I want to focus on that one fucking thing. You, you decided who you'd now need to be. Whatever you decided, that way that you took on for yourself, I could just mention that, give you a few examples there. That's the inauthenticity. That's what's inauthentic. The you that decided it, that's the authentic you. That's your authentic self. But your authentic self got threatened by life and adopted a way of being to combat that kind of threat in the future. So the ways of being that you are now, by default, fundamentally hardwired, that is to say the you that wakes up in the fucking morning, you decided that. So <clears throat> the interesting thing about that is, on its own, it doesn't mean anything. It's just more fucking information, right? And if and if one of your ways of being is being analytical, you'll already be analyzing the shit out of this right now, and disagreeing with it, agreeing with it, you know, fucking quoting some existentialist bullshit from 1928 um, or some theory you read in fucking 92. <clears throat> um, so what I want you to understand, though, is and what I want you to start to kind of investigate, and you got to investigate it. Again, we'll go back to the start of the show. you got to investigate it from your perspective. I'm just giving you the fucking information here. Having this information will make zero difference in the quality of your fucking life. Like zero, not one bit, right? You'll just be sitting there kind of getting off on it, going, oh, this is fucking fascinating. This makes so much fucking sense, right? But it won't make any difference to the way you live your life. And ultimately, you know, that's what I'm about. I'm about giving you new ways to live your life, new ways to express yourself, right? But you have to do the fucking thinking. So, <clears throat> so the you that you've become is in fact, I mean, it really is just like a fucking mask. It's something you wear to combat and strategize the decisions you made in the first 20 years of life. 
That's why it doesn't feel like you. And you have the upsets and the complaints and the hooks and the triggers of that you. Sometimes when you sit down with somebody and you logically go through one of their upsets, you just go through it in a really kind of calm way and they're like, oh, that's fucking bullshit. That's right. That's right, because now you're getting a look at it. Right, and then so sometimes in life, you have that realization that one of your upsets or one of your complaints is fucking bullshit. But then that you takes over and justifies it. Right, I talked about this weeks ago. I said, <clears throat> what, what everything you're doing in life is to justify you. It's not self justification, it justifies the existence of you, the you that you've become, the you that you decided you'd need to be. Right, so <clears throat> that becomes the straitjacket, that becomes what you're locked into. You're locked into that you, unless, and this is where we loop it all back. You start to understand that phenomenon, that you, that you've become. So again, if you're, we talked about being hardworking, for instance, just think it, I'll use that as an example, right? Because it's one of mine. If you use the example of hardworking, hardworking needs hard work. It requires hard work. So if it finds itself in a situation where there's no pull, no draw, no need for hard work, It'll just make shit up. <clears throat> so it'll do stuff like procrastinate. And it'll just let things build up. And then it can just go into a fucking frenzy of trying to solve things. Right? That's that way of being hardworking. It needs industry. Right? It needs that, that kind of um, demand of itself. And, and there's a certain kind of chaos to being hardworking. Right. And it's very, very fucking challenging, for instance. Right. And again, this is doing the thinking. This is looking at the information. Oh, I'm hardworking. That makes no fucking difference. What do you think it's like for somebody to live with that? What's it like to go on vacation with that? Hardworking. Right. Because it'll turn the vacation into stuff to do. Right. Now, now, obviously, when people hear stuff like this, they go to the opposite. They're immediately like, Oh, I just need to fucking relax more. <clears throat> no, no, you got to investigate more. So we're going to stick with this example of hard working, right? But <clears throat> excuse me. But right now we could be talking about being competitive or we could be talking about being kind, which is another big one for people, right? People say, well, you know, <clears throat> I'm so empathetic to people and they're just assholes to me and they don't appreciate me. Yeah, that's the fucking game. That's the fucking game. Right? You're just going to kind the fuck at them. <laughs> right? And in that game, some people are going to be like, oh, you're so kind. And other people are just going to be like, <clears throat> So my people who are drawn to that, like that's their driving way of being, to be kind. Yeah, you'll have some fucking old school, deep-seated, quiet resentments burning a fucking hole in you. That's the impact. It's not enough for me to just say you've got a default way of being called being kind. You got to dive in. You got to see like, okay, what's that like for me? So the, the, <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> the, the visual that I would like to, for you to have in your mind is, I, I think I talked about this and do it, do the work. You got to think of those default ways of being like a tree. Okay. And so when I describe it, when I say something like, a default way of being called being hardworking. That's the trunk of the tree. That kind of just gets you to the meat of it. Then you want to follow the trunk of that tree up. And you want to see how that thing plays a, this way of being called being hardworking. So what's it like for me? What's it like for them, those around me, right? How do I get things done? What are some of the things I keep bumping up against? What are the, some of the familiar conundrums and problems in my life that I can see I use hard working to solve? Okay. So what are the problems in my life that I use being hard working to overcome and solve? And again, 
I'm giving you a fucking example. You got to look for your own life. You got to do the thinking, okay? And if you're like, well, I don't know how to do this, thing, you got to read the fucking books, right? Because this is the sort of stuff I'm talking about. So again, I'm sticking with this example of being hardworking. And again, people tend to go to the opposite. They're like, well, I'll just be more laid back or I'll be relaxed or I'll meditate more. It's, it's now you're on a fucking pendulum back and forth. So if you look at those times when you experience like that compulsion to be industrious, to get to work, to get it done, we got to get it done, we got to get it done, that kind of. And you and if if somebody out there who has hard working as a default way of being, you fucking know exactly what I'm talking about right now. You know that fucking feeling. You know that like I gotta get it done. I gotta go. I gotta keep going. I gotta that right. I'm just gonna grind it out right like that. Um. So when you're in and present to right, I mean it's always there, but you're just not always present to its its demand. But when you're present to its demand, you're so locked into industry being the fucking answer. I would ask you a simple question. When you become so locked into that, what are you missing out on? What's the ways that you cash in in favor of hard working? Right? So for me, by the way, and it took a bit of work, for me to see it, but one of the ways that I what one of the ways of being that I sacrifice in favor of being hardworking was being loving. Now it doesn't seem to make any fucking sense, right? Doesn't seem to make any sense. I'm like, I'm just being hardworking. Yeah, but when I'm in that fucking space, it's like I'm shut off. Like I have no time for people. I've no time for anything. I'm just fucking locked in. So I miss out on being loving. So rather than, you know, coming up with some, again, some pendulum or fucking swing from hardworking to relaxed or some shit like that, I really got like the practice was to practice being loving. It doesn't mean to say I can't get things done that I don't get things done, but I don't always use, I don't use it as a solution to everything, right? Because again, being hardworking, again, think of the fucking tree. It's so, once you get into this way of thinking, You'll no longer be a fucking mystery to yourself. But if you think of hard working, hard working is by its nature impatient. It's impatient, right? If you go to any, use any one of the other kind of default ways of being that I was talking about recently, right? Just a bit ago. If I'm talking about um, being analytical, of all the default ways of being, probably the most internal. Being analytical, you go in the way. You're always going in the way for a fucking solution, right? <clears throat> Being analytical, you don't like simplicity. There's got to be more to it for you, right? So a lot of these guys, I see them on social media, and they're talking about, oh, you know, it's never that, it's never that simple. And I'm like, it's, it's mostly that simple. They don't like this whole idea. Oh, that's just, they call it reduction, right? And it's simply reductionism. And I'm like, no, that's only because you you desire complexity because that default way of being that you are desires the complex. And it doesn't even want a fucking solution, by the way. It only wants to investigate the complexity. So even when I, I don't know, I used to coach people like this, right? You know, even when you come across a solution, they'll go all the way back and reinvestigate just to make sure or they'll burn the whole fucking thing down. I used to work with a computer engineer, and he was a, he was a super fucking smart man um, in that analytical sense. But that's what he would do. He would he would destroy projects just so that he could have that experience of having to rebuild again and get through all the complexity again because he was fascinated by the minutia of, of, of that kind of analysis. He has... Default way of being was to analyze because somewhere earlier in his life, he decided being analytical was how he was going to get this life done. And that's the question I have for you this week. What are some of those ways of being? And again, stick to them. Keep them very simple. Three to five ways of being. And if you look, yeah, I decided that that would be better for me to be this way than that way, number one. 
Number two, what's the impact of that? Like living that way, what have I done to myself? And what's it like for the people around me? And when I'm that way, what are the ways of being that I've sacrificed? The ways that I just can never be that way now, given this. And when you arrive there and you've done that investigating, that's when you get to that point where you're like, oh, I got a new practice I need to take on. What's the new practice? The you that you've sacrificed. Your practice being the you that you've sacrificed. Now, look, here's what I would invite you to do. Listen to this fucking show 30 times and go back and take notes and think and go back. I could, listen, this subject alone, I could write a fucking book on this and sell a lot of copies of books. This subject alone, I could be drip feeding you this on some fucking course that you're coughing up 40 bucks a month for or 99 bucks a month for. And you'd find, oh, this fucking course is great value to me. But you know, I don't, I, you know, I'm getting fucking tired of keep saying this. I'm not doing this to make fucking money. I do this to give you the information and to show you the pathway to uncovering for yourself the kind of freedom and self-expression that's available to you if you do the right kind of work. I don't serve you fucking fake platitudes. I don't fucking tell you you're right. I don't tell you, you know, it's all their fun. Nobody understands you. <laughs> I don't do any of that fucking shit. Why? Because it doesn't fucking work. It doesn't work. Okay? You'll be revisiting these conversations with me later. So, you know, if I'm a little too invasive or I'm a little too abrupt or I'm a little too harsh for you, you'll be fucking back. You'll be back. Because what I'm offering you is the truth. And the truth is rarely comfortable. <laughs> the truth is an upset to the comfort of what you've come to believe. So then what you've come to believe can get challenged. And when it gets challenged, you get discombobulated. Or as we say in Scotland, discombob you fucking light it. <laughs> I don't say that. I just made that up. All right. Anyway, we're going to go for a short break. Um, we'll be back after after this little bit here um, with our question from the nation, which, you know, you know this. Every fucking week we pick a great one. Um, and but please remember, look, rate, review, and subscribe. I know some of you are listening to this show, and you've been listening to this show for a long time, and um, you've never reviewed it. You've never gone online and just thrown your review in there. And your whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five stars makes a fucking massive difference. Okay? It makes a massive difference to the show and our ability to go and impact as many people as possible. We got it, we're up against the fucking algorithm. So when you just sit there and you take from the show and I keep giving you this and you keep taking from it, that's our that's our relationship. Okay. I contribute to you and you just take it, right? Fine. If that's what you want to do. What I'm requesting you do is send something back our way, okay? You don't have to fucking do it. I'm not guilting you into anything. I'm just asking you to look at this in that simple terms. Come back, write, review, and subscribe to the show. And I'm just going to keep fucking bringing it to you, okay? All right. We're going to have a quick break, and we'll be back with our question from the nation. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the second part of the show. This is obviously, if you've been here before, um, the part of the show where we talk about our question from the nation. People who are out there, listeners to the podcast, they send in a question, something they're maybe dealing with in their life. Sometimes it's not a simple question. Sometimes they're unfolding a big conundrum, right? Sometimes people send me emails and there's 10 paragraphs in there, right? They got to get it all out, I guess. Um, so this is the part where I take a question from the nation and I apply my philosophy to that particular question. And the whole point of that is for the person who's who sent the question, but everybody else who's listening, to get a sense of how the, the philosophy actually works in real life. Like, how does it work out in somebody's life? And so this question came in 
I want to say three weeks ago. I can't remember, three weeks ago. And it's another one. I've been getting a bunch of questions recently that are just fucking great questions. It's just really powerful, vulnerable, and enlightening questions. When I say enlightening, I mean enlightening to everybody else when they get a sense of how the philosophy would work in a situation like this. So anyway, and if you're somebody who does have a question, um, you can text it to me or you can leave a voicemail at 646-450-3203, 646-450-3203, or you can send me an email, connect at garyjohnbishop.com. All right, so let's crack on. This is from Chad, right? And I'm kind of looking at my right here so because that's where the question is, right? So I'm going to be reading this question. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see me turning my head. If you're listening to it in your the usual place you get podcasts, you don't see shit. <laughs> so it's not a problem for you. All right. So here's Chad's question. I just read Unfuck Yourself. Great book. Thank you for writing it. I was diagnosed with brain cancer three plus years ago. I'm doing very well, so well that I want to start my own business after this brush with death. But I have a wife and two toddlers, bills and a mortgage, guaranteed income, and most importantly, health insurance through my day job. No universal health care coverage here in America. So I'm going back and forth with myself on whether to do this or not. I think about it every single day. I obsess about it. I, do I risk it all or just suck it up and be thankful for my job? It's something I've wanted since I was 11 years old and selling pens and pencils to my friends. Just wondered if you've met anybody in my situation before and if you have any advice. Everyone I know says I should go for it. Everyone except my wife and family. All right. Well, in regards to your last point, there's a reason why it's more of a concern for your wife and family um, because they're the ones who would have to pay for the failure, right? So if the business fails or your health fails, it'll be a massive intrusion in their life, right? As I'm sure you already know. So it's very easy for people to say, fucking go for it, which <clears throat> there's, a, there's an element, a truth in go for it. But there's a complete um, lack of responsibility in go for it on its own. So when somebody says just go for it, then you're just ignoring the reality of the situation you find yourself in. So, Chad, I'm going to talk to you about going for it. I'm going to talk to you about what does it look like to go for it in life and how does that play out in one's life. And I'm going to give you an example from my own life. So this was probably 15 or so years ago. You know, I was going to pursue a new career. And this new career was half the income that I was making at the time. So I'll say that again, it was half the income. Now, the life that I had at the time, you know, uh, you know, I was your average, you know, everyday person, home, car, vacation, nothing spectacular, right? No crazy fucking designer brand, What that, this thing and the next thing, you know, it was all pretty simple, you know, a used car that I'd bought and was paying back monthly payments and typical credit card bills and, you know, all the same shit that people have in their everyday life. And I do appreciate there are a bunch of people who, like, that's their aim. Like, they're still going for that right now. But anyway, and, and you know, that career move for me was much like it was for you. It was like, this is what I want to do in my life. But there's a harsh reality. There's a, like, well, i got a family. You know, my life is going in a certain direction. What's it going to be like? And so I literally went into the numbers. I started to drill right down into the numbers in a way that I hadn't. But not just the numbers, like, but I wanted to get, like, what's the consequence of the numbers? Like, in real terms, what does this mean for me and mean for them? And, um, and it was, like, that process allowed me to really confront the reality of that life, right, rather than going in there with little more than a bucket of piss and hope, right, which is no good to anybody, right? Hope won't do shit for you. And I know people disagree with this and I don't give a fuck. Um, people think hope is useful. Hope is what you rely on in the absence of clarity in your strategy. <clears throat> 
So you need to really get clear with yourself about what that life would look like. So in other words, you got to look at like fundamentally, if I'm to step forward with this, and I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't, I'm just saying if I'm going to step forward with this, I'm going to be fully responsible for, for its impact and its consequence on myself and other people. And I'm going to put in place what I need to put in place such that I can manage that responsibility. Sometimes that requires you to think a little outside the box. Sometimes that requires you to look at your life in terms of like there are certain things you might say you need because people say this all the time. And I know I said that, you know, when I was going through this process many years ago, oh, I need this and I need that. And I need the next thing. When I questioned, I'm like, I actually don't need that. Like, that's just nothing in me, right? Um, so one of the things that I believe or not, I did away with was cable television. Which, you know, I was a big fucking TV guy in those days, and it seems like nothing. But, you know, when you're at home a lot and you spend X amount of time watching TV, it becomes a thing. It becomes So I had to put new things in place that weren't going to cost me any money, right? I think that was the first time. This might have been just when Netflix was coming out. So I was <laughs> I got any Netflix, you know. Um, and it was only costing me a really small amount of money. I want like five bucks a month. All right, so... So life was different. It changed, but I created the change. I created the difference and I am, I'm, I empowered the people around me. I'm like, this is what it's going to be like for a while. And then I put certain promises in. So the promises were, I'm going to restore us to this number by this amount of time. So I think I gave it two years at the time. I'm going to restore us to this number. And if I don't restore us to that number, I'm at. See, like I box myself in. So that, so that is to say, I ended up with a set of agreements with the people that it would impact the most. We have some agreements and these are the agreements. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to do the same agreement I did. I was clear that I was asking my wife to become partner in something that when we got married, she never signed up for that. So I had to really look and say, okay, this is the game that I want to play. I'm requesting you come and play this game with me. And and part of that is I had to say there, you do realize if you say yes to this, you're adopting this as your own. Now. You don't get to say, well, this is your game. No, it's ours. Right. And that's challenging. Right. It's very, very challenging because I had to work with my wife and talk to my wife through like what were her fears and what was she up against and what was she trying to avoid. And, you know, and, and then what could I put in place or what could we put in place that would that would take care of that for her and or me, right? So again, that's when you're being fully responsible for not only the thing you're up to, but its impact and how it impacts the people around you. I will add one little addendum to this, though, which was fucking wild to me at the time, because I've never been somebody who functioned that way, right? Some people are very much into details like that. They don't tend to go into like the impact and the emotional impact and that sort of stuff, which you need to, but um, in the first two years of that that um, project for us, we saved up more money in that two years than we'd done in the previous five when I had doubled the money. <laughs> and that's sometimes how it rolls because you actually start to see how much how much wasted you have in your life. And, and it was a big change for us, you know, like we had to shop in different places and do different things. And, you know, like, like, and, and, it, and we, we adopted that lifestyle pretty much. And I still assert looking back in those times, you know, the, the context for doing it was in the right spot. You know, as a family, we wanted to devote our life to something and making a difference with something, empowering something. It wasn't about making it. And, you know, so that shift for us was was transformational. It made a massive difference for us as a family. And um, and so I would say to you, yeah, like step out there, have the courage to to pursue your dreams. Right. And do it in such a way where you're fully cognizant of what the fuck you're getting yourself into. Right. Not like. Something, nothing gets to get you out of left field, right? Even your health, nothing gets you out of left field. You're like, no, no, this was part of the deal. This was part of what could happen. And I'm as ready for that as somebody could be. 
So, and, and so to build into this, you might be like, well, maybe I can't, maybe, I, maybe I can quit my job. Maybe I need to get a part time job on my business. Maybe I need to, you know, you need to work that out. You need to, you need to uh, create your own little casserole to make it work. So already in your mind, you might have an idea of what this is going to look like and what you end up creating with your life. It doesn't look exactly like that, even though it's getting you in the direction that you want to go in. Okay. So, um, you can take big risks in life. And this is not just for you, Chad, this is for anybody. You can take big risks in this life and be responsible for that impact, right? And that'll actually empower you when it's not going the way you thought it would, which happens an awful lot. There's a high percentage chance that you're going to hit the wall at some point, somewhere in that process, right? The last little piece I want to give you, Chad, and everybody else on this is interesting because you finished it off with, um, you know, that you did this. You, you, you're you doing this because you were faced with, like, this kind of life-threatening situation. And that it really is where we are as human beings. Like, we, we only change. We only really change because situation around us forces us to. Or there's something about our situation that we can no longer stomach. And that's the only real change we'll make, right? We don't, we don't necessarily make change out of great desire or, or, or passion, right? Or, or just for the opportunity to change. It's usually forced upon us. And, you know, when you face something like ill health, like you did, yeah, I mean, that's really in your fucking face. Like a lot of shit gets real. Um, so I would, I would, I would invite you to ride that wave, right? Because it won't last forever. That experience of like, there's more for me. I think that's something you gotta, you gotta ride that wave, but you gotta realize you got a few people on that fucking board with you. So you gotta, you gotta cater to that to a certain degree too. But, uh, but there's no reason why you can't do everything I've just said. No reason. Right. It just takes a little bit more thinking, a little bit more planning and and you're going to get stretched. So that's the other thing I would ask you to take into consideration is you're going to get pressed. So how are you going to manage that for yourself while you're providing and doing all this other stuff? How are you going to manage your own well-being? How are you going to manage your own peace of mind? How are you going to manage your own stress and frustrations and overwhelm and so on? And that'll need pieces put in place too, because you got to be responsible for that and how it's going to play in your life. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for me for this week. Thanks to everyone for uh, for listening to another episode of Unfuck Nation. It is my game to bring you the best, the absolute best in personal growth and development, insights, wisdom, and and sense of personal power. Uh, if you haven't yet, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast, whatever you're getting this, seeing it or hearing it. And if you have a question for me or a conundrum for me or something that you want to discuss or you would like me to discuss, please text or, or call 646-450-3203 or uh, email me, connect at Gary John Bishop. That's it, you guys. Have a great one. See you on the flip side.